Hey everyone, it's Strategy Gaming Dojo here where we find, learn, and play one more turn of the great strategy games. And we are now going to continue on with Field of Glory Empires. And this is episode number four. So far in the first three episodes, we have expanded out from our home territory here. And we've taken over three more regions or territories. And we are starting to build them up the best we can. Uh, our army up here is the strongest in this region, and so we're kind of going around bossing a little bit. But, you know, when you first start off, you're just taking on independent tribes. Uh, most of the established armies in the game should be able to do that. We have not run into another major power uh, that you can see here, like Aquitani or the Galli or the Veneti or the Parasai. We have not run into them yet or started to fight with them at all. And uh, so we've just been running over these Celtic tribes and taking their territory. Uh, last time we took over this territory, Lemavicia. Um, and Lemavicia, this symbol right here means it was raided. Now, it was not raided by us. This is an AI thing. So when you see raided, that's really a, a function of the AI doing it. And it, it does this, it kind of throws a challenge at you. Because when a territory has been raided, you get all these penalties. You can see this one, all of the penalties, and then you see duration five. So, I mean, this takes... Um, this takes, you know, five turns to get rid of these penalties. It's really quite steep early in the game. Uh, and so that kind of stinks, but there's nothing we can do about it. Uh, later in the game, you can build walls. You can leave garrisons to help try to stave off, uh, you know, these raids. But early in the game, and especially in this case, we just took this over. There's just nothing we can do. We also have this territory under pacification, so we have even more penalties. Now, luckily, we were dealt the, the choice to take Flaxfield. So if we click on this again, this was the, uh, the cards we were dealt, our choices. And each time, I don't know if we've gone into this quite enough, each time you have like five or six things that could show up in the food slot based on what tier you're in. Generally, you need to have built three of these tier one things before you will start getting tier two. And then the same t uh, with tier two to tier three and tier three to tier four and so on and so on. So anyway, uh, you know, this is just a random shuffle, and we happen to get flax. Well, why was that important? Well, we are currently paying nine gold pieces per turn because our barracks at our home territory needs flax, and we are not producing it anywhere. So we needed to get flax, so that's good. Um, so like I said, it's a random shuffle. This could be any of these really could have popped up. It just so happens we got a uh, flax field. That's great. Same with all these other cards. There are, you know, depending on what tier you're in, there will be five, six, seven, eight different things that could pop up here each turn. If you don't like your choices, you can shuffle them. Uh, and I kind of like that system. Uh, the other thing I don't think that maybe I've gone into deep enough yet is your armies themselves. Now, you know, this is who, this is our, our empire or, you know, prospective empire. Let's put it that way. This is our general. You can see here, he's got a one star on defense and a one star on offense. What does that mean? That means he gets an extra dice roll to add to our combat modifier. Uh, he gets an, one extra dice roll if we're on offense, and he gets one if we're on defense. Now, there are other generals here, and you can see they're 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. So let's just take this guy. He would get uh, no extra dice rolls on offense, but on defense, he does get one. So he's more of a defensive general. They also have bonuses that you can read through. So you have kind of different generals that could do different things well. Some fight better in forests, some better in mountains, so on and so forth. Now also with the army, it'll tell you the combat power, how much food they're using, their move speed. You could split this army if you wanted to. You could merge it. You could assault. Now when you go into a territory with a, a fortification like this, you siege it. And it starts, you know, you start your siege and it starts wearing them down. If you think you've worn them down enough, you can order an assault. Now, I'm sure we will get a chance to do that as we continue to play on. You could garrison troops. So enter front, 
friendly fortified structures at their destination. You could raid. Now, I said that this area got raided. That was probably by the Galli. That is not considered an act of war. Um, you can raid kind of with impunity into different regions here. Now, you may take some losses and whatnot, uh, but it's not an act of war. You could retaliate. Um, in this, the commanding general will mount a retaliation expedition against a hostile region. You won't capture the first hostile region entered and will return to the previous region instead. Uh, so, you know, basically you kind of go in, you smack them, and then you get back out. It's not really like declaring war and going all out and trying to take over regions. You could also disband your army if you wanted to. Now, down here to these cards, what is all of this? Well, uh, you have a different card for each unit. And I know this can be confusing when people first look at the interface for this game. But if you just go here, that's the first one. Go here, that's the second one. It will, you know, you will be allowed to pick any of these three cards you want. Just kind of move your mouse over them, hover them over. Uh, so we have three units of heavy infantry. We have three, uh, oh, this is Ambactus heavy infantry. This is three regular infantry. We have three of the light cavalry. Uh, it seems we have six warrior of the warriors, and we have three of the skirmishers. Now, what are these stars? That is their experience level. And, of course, the more experience, the better. So three stars is better than two stars. Uh, let's see if it affected their combat power. So the one with two stars has a combat power of three. And as you see, the one with three stars has a combat power of five. And so as they go up in experience, they get more effective. They're less likely, uh, or they're, they just have more effectiveness from their combat power. So that's great. Um, and it will tell you on the side of the card what their current combat power is. You can also uh, look for information, more information on these by hitting control as you're over it, and it will tell you every single thing about this individual unit. Over here on the left, this kind of green, or here you see red, is their current shape that they're in. So the green is, hey, we're good, we're ready. Yellow is, we're fatigued, we're worn down a little bit. Red is, you know, we're on the verge of, of collapse. Uh, and you can see the combat power is down to one. With the yellows, that guy's a two still, this one's a two, and the guys in green are a four. And so the more ready they are for combat, the more effective in combat value they will have. And so that's armies. Um, so what are we going to do this time? All right, so we have a Flaxfield building here, albeit, albeit uh, very slowly. Uh, luckily, we got that Flaxfield to pop up. Uh, but it's going to take nine full turns. That's a while. Now, one thing we need to keep in mind is we're bleeding money here pretty quickly. We're only, what, nine turns, eight turns? Uh, I guess it would be nine where we're going to run out of money. Now, you can take loans, but you don't want to start playing that game. So we're going to have to figure out how to get some more money here eventually. Uh, we, you know, we're down a little manpower, but we did just build this unit in our home um, region. And so that, you know, sucked off a little bit of the manpower there. Uh, metals, we're doing okay. Uh, you know, we've got plus four. That's fine. And then this is our legacy. So we're going to leave this unit here. What are we going to do with this unit? Well, first of all, I wanted to show you one other thing, one other game play component, and that is diplomacy. And if we're on our own uh, home region here, you see Arverni. This will tell us zero, kind of our, this will always tell you the general feeling, whatever empire you're clicked on, their general feeling of everyone else. So let's kick, click on Emporia. Emporia really likes Massalia. And you can see why. If you look down here at Emporia's tab, they have a treaty, a full alliance with Massalia. Okay, so these two are going to come to each other's defense. Uh, spoiler alert, they do that every game. These two really, those two city-states really rely on each other. Um, Emporia does not really have a feeling about anyone else. It hasn't really encountered any of these others. Now let's go look at Massalia. We'll see Massalia really likes Emporia. Imagine that. Um, then 
they don't really have a feeling about any of these other places. Let's look at Aquitani. And Aquitani, nope, nothing yet. It's because none of us have kind of run into each other yet. We haven't fought. We haven't declared war. Uh, you can see what their objectives are. Well, that just so happens to be in our territory. So uh, that will come to a head. Now, as we click on ours, you can see our objectives. One is down here, uh, Sept Septimania, and the other one is over here, which is Asara. Okay, and so these red, usually you have two out on the map where the game's saying, if you go take one of those, we'll get rid of a negative token. Sometimes it can be a good idea, sometimes a bad idea. You do not have to go take your objectives. Don't feel like, oh my gosh, you know, I'm going to lose the game because I didn't get over into this mountainous territory and take this. Um, this might not be a good idea for us. You know, it may, if the Romans get up in this area, this may kind of provoke them, for instance, or it may cause Emporia and Massalia to declare war on us because this is their, their objective as well. Uh, you know, there's a lot of different kind of uh, things that go into it. So let's say we wanted to interact with Massalia. Um, what you know what could we do here well we could declare war on them if we wanted to we could ask them for an alliance and you can look down here and it'll tell you all of the factors now it's zero percent because they're they don't feel threatened they're not at war with anyone so you know they're not going to jump into an alliance with us uh right now it's zero percent let me tell you if rome gets right here it will be a hundred percent they would be very happy to get into an alliance with us um, declare War II, we could offer them a gift, uh, a significant amount of money. It's 100 It would give them a better feeling about us. If we were trying to, you know, pump up our chances of them joining an alliance or, you know, somehow becoming more tied to us, we may want to do that. Uh, we could insult their emissary if we wanted to do that for some reason. Or we can trade with them. And the trading is down here. We could give them metal. We could give them cooperation. Or we could give them money. And then we'll ask for something back. So let's just pick on one of these. Uh, okay. And then we'll go over to their side. And we'll ask them for, let's say, 124 money. Transaction chance, 6% because of these bargain points. You can always look at the bargain points, all right? And that will tell you how likely really they would be to accept. We're giving them essentially nothing. So let's go over here to our side. You can always right click on those to get rid of them. Let's give them metal. Let's say we gave them you know, 200 metal. This gives us 15 bargain points, okay? They would, and then I had previously picked give money 124. That's six bargain points all right and so then the game does a calculation the bargain points we have is a positive of nine this transaction chance is still only 18 percent they don't love it uh actually let's go back over here and let's right click on that and then say give money and let's this time let's just ask for 62 uh gold pieces now it's up to 21 percent and that's how you do trade you just go to this side this is what i'll give you click down here or click up here and then this is what you ask for when you're happy with it you can propose that treaty and it tells you you know it's going to the game is going to do a dice roll um you can sort these things uh so the trading system that's how it works i think it's very simple uh but very easy Re request has not been sent discard changes what did I say? Simple and easy? Yeah, I think it's simple and easy, but I actually think it's pretty good. I think it's, you know, as good when it comes to trading, it's very hard to model trade, right? In a game, uh, when you're doing a negotiation between a human and an AI like that. And so I, I like it. I think it's fine. Now, to get off the negotiation screen, we need to click there and we get back to our main map. All right, where are we going next? Well, let's take them home first because we have the most food there. And then let's come down here to a tour. A tour is another plane. It's got a good forage value. It's got, uh, it's going to defend with approximately seven Celtic units. So we will uh, overwhelm them on the frontage, right? Because they need to have 14 to cover the entire front. We have 14. They do not. Um, other than that, 
what else are we doing? Feeding ourselves. I always go back and check one time. We're building an orchard here very slowly again, six turns. Uh, we're building a flax field there. We talked about that. Uh, oh, we did get the clean water here. Okay, and so this did not take up a building slot. We, we have eight building slots currently. Because Why is that? Well, we have eight pops. Every time you get a new pop, you get a new building slot. Uh, you can get bonuses to get extra building slots, uh, but that's much later. Um, so we've used four building slots, and you may say, huh? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes, but this is a free one. It takes no building slots, and you can tell by the green around it. Public Works takes no building slot, and our Tribal Council takes no building slot. So we're only using four, and we got large, or we got regular farm here, which is a really good one. It can be upgraded to a large farm later, but we got all of these bonuses here uh, because we already have wool and we have cattle next door. And you may say, what, what, huh? What do you mean by that? Let's look at the trade goods overlay. There is cattle right here, so we automatically uh, trade with them uh, since it's right next door. So we have cattle, so we get the bonus for cattle when we do farms. And you'll always see that. It'll tell you what bonuses you will get right here, or it'll tell you which ones you're missing. Um, all right. Excellent. Let's go ahead and resolve this turn and see what happens. Now, it's going to take us two turns to get down here. How do I know that? Well, it says two. And when you click back on it, it will light back up again. Just right click, and that sets it in place. So we'll be here this turn. Then the turn after that, we'll head down here. We are going to have to figure out a way to get more gold. So we'll resolve this turn and see what happens. Mm. Interesting. All right. So the Aquitani came and took the territory we wanted to go take. That will often happen. Now we have to make a decision. Do we want to go to war with the Aquitani right now? And what are the factors? Okay, what are the factors in that? What, what goes into it? Well, first of all, let's look here. We did increase our culture and decadence ranking up to two from the bottom. <laughs> so we're getting better. But we did not get an aging token this time. That's just good fortune. Uh, I think it's kind of a 50-50 chance, or maybe it's even like a 60% chance that you do get one. It's a random dice roll. We did not get one this time, all right? We also, our legacy here went up. It's now up to seven. It's gaining two per turn. That's got us tied for 32nd place. As you can see here, some of these empires are really, you know, getting a lot every time. That's all right, you know. Slow and steady wins the race. Uh, so we've got seven. That's great. Everything's good here. Let's click. Now then, our army, you may be saying, how did we get 102? Did we build something or what happened? No. These units recover as time goes on. So we didn't fight, fight a battle that time. Uh, but some of our units here repaired themselves. And that's just a matter of time. you got to make sure that they have enough food wherever they are. Uh, you know, their food usage is nine, but the forage value here is six, but we did have some available food in the territory. And so you've just got to, you know, make sure they have food and they will repair themselves. It's just time. Uh, so let's go click on our unit here. Uh, we, I don't want us to be locked into going there. Get off there. Oh, shoot. Well, we... Oh, there we go. Okay, so I unclicked that. We don't want to go into this territory yet, or do we? Um, and here are the factors you really want to think about. Well, first of all, we can look down here and see that it appears Aquitani maybe took over Emporia, or is at least um, occupying it. So how would we know that? Well, let's go to Diplomacy. Let's click on Emporia. Emporia. Uh, Massalia is its... Oh, okay. Well, it became a protectorate of Massalia. So rather than just say, hey, we're allies, now Massalia controls Emporia in some respects. It's a protector 
uh, Emporia is its client state. Oh, okay. That's why this changed color and you see the brown lines here. I thought maybe Aquatani had um, invaded and occupied, but you can always go to the diplomacy screen, click here, and if we did that again and clicked here, if they were at war with Aquatani, it would show us here, Aquatani, war. Um, so you'll always know that. Uh, so Aquatani's at 45 and their army's tired. We're at 102. We have a good general and, well, their general's one and two, one and two. So he's a good defensive general. Got to keep that in mind. Let's click on their army really quickly here. What's his bonus? Wow, he's a tactician. This guy is amazing. He's a one, two but he also has an attack and a defensive bonus of plus one. So if you attack them, he gets three dice rolls every time and gets to keep the best one. We only get, well, he actually gets four dice rolls. He gets the base dice roll. He gets two for his defensive rating plus a defensive bonus roll. So he gets four rolls and gets to keep the best one. So he's probably always going to get a five or a six, right? Meanwhile, we would only get our base roll plus the plus one for our attack general, our general's attack rating. Uh, yeah, so we might not want to mess with them. Sometimes early in the game as the Arverni, it makes a lot of sense to declare war on Aquitani. Take this, take your lumps for your culture and your decadence just because you build up so fast you can really get rich uh, but this guy is way too good of a general we would not have any luck with him or it's very unlikely now they're probably going to come down here we need that general to die <laughs> now unlike ck3 or a game like that you cannot go run a scheme against him it's just going to be time and uh, i kind of hope they don't declare war on us because he's he's really something all right so our army has reconstituted itself a little bit uh what is this our Verney was raided by aquitani and the interlopers were soundly defeated okay excellent now this means they tried to raid us they were on a or unsuccessful let's put it this way so let's go back to our army and look at it that's what i was talking about a little earlier you we could hit raid and go raid into these other countries uh well they're not countries yet uh you know uh, empires we'll just call them empires um you could go raid into them and it's not an act of war now it may piss us off we may want to go do something about aquitani doing that but it's not a formal declaration of war okay um so what are we going to do here well i don't want to mess with them at least not yet. So we need to go to one of these other provinces around us and take it. Now this one here, you can kind of, uh, each one, you can look at, and it'll tell you, you know, how much available food does this have? 22, okay, that's pretty, pretty good for early on. Forage value is four, that's not very good. It is now a snowy forest. Now you remember a little earlier, we read that message and it said, we think there are lean times ahead or whatever. Uh, that's what this is really. Every uh, fourth turn is a winter turn. So, you know, just keep that in mind. So this is snowy forest. The land costs three. Okay. Um, this is not great because it's got this fortification. We don't want to have to go do a siege and run into a strong army so let's let's go elsewhere now over here uh this is again forest all right the forage value is four available food nine but it only defends with four units so okay and they've got two pops there all right let's look at this now this has got four pops the forage value is only three it's a snowy hill so it is snowing here uh, and hills, hills are very good to defend if you have a small army because the frontage is only six, only six units. So if you have a strong, a small, strong army, try to find hills. Uh, down here, this has a pop of two or pops of two. Now this does get us closer to an objective. That is true. Uh, but I have a feeling it's not, you know, Aquatani is going to go take this, this turn. So why don't we go this way first? 
Uh, is that is that what we want to do? No. Let's actually let's not do that. That's going to defend with nine. That's got nine available food. They're going to defend with four. What about this? This way we could kind of hem them in. Um, this has got nine available food. Two pops. We'll defend with four units. So basically nothing. Uh, yeah. They're going to. What are they going to defend with up here? Gosh, nine units. All right. Um, four. All right. Well, let's expand up here. I really think this is the best way to go. It's a forest. We do have to cross a river, uh, which does give you a little bit of a penalty, but that's fine. All right. And off we go. What other building could we do? Nothing really. You see that our farm has clicked down to only five turns to go now. Uh, we could move some pops around. We will be getting a new pop here in three turns, uh, but there's really not a whole lot uh, to do here. We want to keep building at the same rate. The more your infrastructure, the higher it is, the faster these things will build. All right. The more people that are in food or the more food you're producing, either from your pops or from buildings, uh, the faster you grow pops. Uh, the more you have in money or the more buildings you have producing money, the more money you have. <laughs> so so culture and money work that way. Um, these infrastructure helps you build buildings faster. Food helps you grow pops faster, right? Makes sense. Uh, the orchard is still five turns away. The flax field is eight. And we are not building anything here. They're still in the same situation till we get rid of raided and under pacification. One thing that did change is we are now plus seven on our food or uh, on our gold. That is because one of the ratings went away. And so it's now producing more gold. I also think that we picked up some money here. Is that right? It's plus one now, plus one, plus one. That's all good. And plus 39. So that's good for sure. Um, regional commerce, 36, citizen taxation, military upkeep. Uh, do, do, do. Yeah, it's just costing us a lot. Oh, I know why that is. It's costing us less to upkeep our military. We had to pay to get those uh, kind of reinforcements to build this unit back up. That cost us quite a bit earlier. We did not find any battles last time, so we didn't have that cost. So our cost went down quite a bit, so that's good. Also, our manpower went up. Uh, because we didn't have to draw off of our manpower to replace our losses in this army. All right, that's what happened. Um, all right, let's play it. Let's see what happens. Yep, sure enough, Aquatani went right down there to take that. Uh, that's a real complication. Uh, we're going to win this easy. I I'm just going to view the report. We killed three of their units. One, you know, kind of ran away whatever we did now this was already yellow i think uh and so everything's good there we survived we did well we survived and thrived now our combat power did go down to 83 we'll have to go look and see that once the turn completely resolves oh no we went down one spot but we again did not get a token so that's excellent uh, we keep, you know, our legacy is bumping up by two every time. Now we'll get more and more things that will give us more and more legacy, but we'll talk about that when we get there. So we did go down one here to next to last again. If you're not last, you're first. No, that's not how it goes, unfortunately. Um, 33rd place, we're tied. All right, but we did take this area. Let's go look at it. Now we have two pops here. We have one that could give us a plus five in infrastructure. So let's go see what food that we could produce. Well, we could do an orchard. Uh, we would get a bonus of five from nuts and seeds. So nuts and seeds must be in one of the territories around us. All right, um, we are missing bonuses from figs and dates. Uh, we do have figs down here, but it's not in the ones surrounding it. So you get the bonuses if uh, someone surrounding you has that thing, or it's in the region that you're in. So this would give us eight food. That's pretty good.
good. Right now it's going to take 37 turns before we would get a new pop. Let's move this pop up here and see how that changes. Now it's down to seven turns. Uh, interesting. Okay. Orchard's pretty good to get here because we do get that plus five bonus. Um, now it is under pacification. So that would take seven turns. The orchard, would we say, let's move this guy back down here. So the food situation is neutral. It's not going to be gaining or losing each time. Um, this would take eight turns. Well, generally I like to go ahead and build things when we can. Uh, because it's kind of more long term, it's a good thing. Uh, we'll start cranking out pops as we get things like orchards built. Uh, but in this case, I'm actually going to mix that up. I'm going to go up here and try to get a pop. Uh, does that really make sense? I don't think it does. Let's go. Okay, I'm going to go back to my original plan. Let's build an orchard there. All right. Uh, let's go back home here uh, to the home base. We've got four more turns until our farm is built. Uh, they, as you can see, the Aquitani tried to raid this province, or I, not province, region, territory. Uh, but the interlopers were soundly defeated. All right, that's good. Uh, we did nothing here. That that was all just game mechanics. Uh, four more on the orchard here. We're not building anything here still. And seven more on the flax field there. Now, as you can see, we took losses in our military so every time we're fighting battles we lose money and we lose manpower trying to replace uh what what has happened okay um all right i think with that i'm going to call this an episode we went through a lot in this turn everything's still going well it does buy i one of my you know things I really like to do is go take on Aquitani really quickly and get all of this. Plus, you can form this province, which gives you even better uh, military units, or at least one better military unit. Uh, but it doesn't look like we can do that this time. This time we may have to try up here, but we're kind of blocked off from that because a lot of those um, regions have already been taken here so i don't even think we can get enough we obviously can't do this one uh there's just too much that's already been taken so we're in an interesting spot we we need aquatani's general to die <laughs> that's what we need this is the obvious place to expand is to the south and to the west so anyway for strategy gaming dojo thank you so much for joining me i really enjoy these i enjoy this game quite a bit if you can't tell uh, it's a good one. Go out and uh, get it, play it. It's a lot of fun. Until next time, I'll talk to you later.